All right, today we will be building the proper VM slash pass-through system for Windows. A lot of people know I still make a lot of Windows content, even though I love Linux. And really to, to make this work, what we have to do is to make my Windows content, I have to basically have bare metal Windows. But I don't want bare metal Windows. I want to still be in Linux. Well, also everyone thinking I'm in Windows. I know, I know it's kind of confusing, but it's gonna be pretty awesome. So what we're doing, gonna do is pass through the hard drive, the GPU, a USB card. So then if I, I need to plug in something and have Windows recognize it, I don't wanna be doing some janky, uh, you know, hey, I plugged it in on Linux and then pass it through. I wanna just plug it into a, a USB card that only that Windows VM has. So really the only thing we're emulating in this entire system would be the CPU. I mean, everything else would be pretty much passed through to it. So we're gonna pass through all those things into that Windows VM and that Windows VM is gonna be full screen. And what we'll do is we'll use a HDMI dummy and looking glass. So it's all, there'll be no lag. There won't be any emulated GPU. Everything will be pretty much as it is on your system if you had Windows loaded up. So no one will be the wiser when I do my Windows tutorials that I'm actually in Linux they'll think I'm in Windows. And that's really what I want. It'll have all the capabilities of bare metal. So should be amazing to say the least. So we'll, we'll see. I've done this system type setup before one, one other time and it worked well. And I really wanna get back to that. And now that I have the hardware to do it, I really, really think it'll be a, a perfect setup. So. Uh, we're going to go with QEMU. We're going to set that up first. This is going to be the virtualization side of things. And then once we have the Windows system set up and working properly, then we do pass through. I use a project from Hikari Knight called Quick Pass Through. This kind of gives me everything I do. Now, this is rewritten in Go, and I haven't used this version of it yet. Hikari uh, Knight had a different version that was just using bash scripts before that worked really well. So we'll, we'll try his Go project out today. This will be a first time ever. Uh, if this has issues, I guess we could probably use his other project, which, uh, let's see, does he still have the old one? I don't know if he forked it. Yeah. So there was the VFIO setup docs that he's done before. And I think he's actually a contributor in Bazite, which is another project I really need to look at as well. Uh, so yeah, between those, uh, the quick pass through does look like it did more from the bash script into go now. So we'll, we use this and I, I think it'll work fantastic. So, uh, yeah, should be fun. How's everybody doing today? Yeah. A little welcome back, I'm getting back in the side of things. And I gotta say, it's really nice. I'm loving the new setup I have here. It's just such a, such a more peaceful environment where. I can easily come in here and just have a good time, which is nice. We are using KDE 6. Uh, we set this up on the last stream. I did a Saturday stream, which is kind of <laughs> not like me, but I was like, just feeling, I was like, oh, I need to get going. I need to get this main system set up. So I was like, why not stream me setting up the main system? Because nobody likes just watching someone do a VM or something that doesn't matter. Uh, you know, you really run into all the problems when you're actually trying to do the things for your system. So that's why I always like to do it that way. Uh, let's see, where is like the about KDE? Probably in settings, huh? I guess we could just pull the package directly from like yay and say, hey, what what session or what what uh, version of Plasma is this? You can see I haven't used Plasma in quite some time. They've actually changed a lot. Uh, most for the better though. Most things I can, let's see, about. Huh, yeah, anywho. Yeah, I might throw some AOE4 from time to time, Jeffy. Uh, we, I need to get going back on that. I just literally took like a month off and just been revamping all of this entire studio. And I was like, okay, I need to redo everything. But I'll definitely throw in some AOE4 uh, probably, probably towards the weekends after I get everything finished setting back up. My main system here, uh, I, I just installed Steam yesterday and it's pretty much ready to go for all, all gaming. I know AOE4 will work pretty well on it as well just installed arch yeah you know and a lot of people ask me why arch and I just, it's more of just a fun i like having fun and arch gives me a lot of fun because there's so many new packages and different stuff to explore if it was for 
like uh, a tried and true business type application. Like, yeah, I know I'm kind of a business, but not not in the respect that I'm like, there's nothing that can happen that I can't fix. So I'm never worried, oh my God, I'm going to delete something or things are just going to completely break and then I won't be able to get it back. That's never going to happen. So I'm never worried about that. So why not use Arch? Why not have some fun? Why not see the latest and greatest on the daily basis? And that's why I chose it. I, I was like, hey, this would be fun. So that's the re rationale of choosing Arch because it's it's just fun. It's just an arguably fun distro that you get to experience whatever you want to experience on it. And there's no limitations, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Unpunished, I don't know if you saw the last stream. Um, I have so many drives in this system. Like, let's just do like a BLK ID. Uh, actually, let's go pseudo BLK ID. I have a few hard drives in this system. And by a few, I mean an absolute metric ton <laughs> of hard drives. So there's so many hard drives in this system that when I went to go Arch install from the Arch installation installation media, Arch install was just like, what is this guy doing? And no, I'm just, I'm just gonna quit now. And it just literally failed. It didn't even get to the main screen of the Arch install, the, the questions to do anything. It just immediately was like, I don't know what this system is and just bombed out. So we had to install Arch the old way, the classic way, the right way on the first install. So if you guys hadn't seen that last VOD, uh, tomorrow on Titus Tech Talk, it should be coming out. I went ahead and condensed it down uh, because I know the VODs on Twitch kind of suck to rewatch. And I removed all the fluff where I'll sometimes just go on tangents like I'm doing now before getting into it. <laughs> so if you want to see the tangents, great. Watch it on Twitch. If you don't, you're just like, hey, give me give me the, the exact thing that you're doing. Then check it out on Titus Tech Talk because I do cut them up and just say, here's all the timestamps. Here's what's happening. And bam. And then I just cut out all the other stuff. I might make clips out of the other stuff. Sometimes I don't. Like yesterday's stream, I was just like, I don't feel like making a bunch of clips and doing it I was like let's just delete them so they'll live on Twitch for a couple weeks and then they'll go into the ether all right uh let's get going uh because we need to get this thing set up first off let's get our virtual machine set up I'm using my website christitis.com to do this I made quick cheat sheets and this is only a couple years old now and uh it still works pretty well I think well, I guess we'll find out if we need to adjust this we will we're gonna go um i think we'll just do the base for the qmu i don't think we'll really change much um uh, because it conflicts with it tables nft remove i ip tables well yeah yeah we want to switch uh if you're unfamiliar with ip tables this is like a firewall type thing and how your network works Typically, you're going to want IP tables dash NFT, where IP tables is uh, depreciated. So no one really ever uses that or deprecated. Um, I always get those. I always change those two words up interchangeably, but whatever. You guys know what I mean. Yeah, so NFT tables is what you want. EB tables depends on IP tables NFT. Yeah. So yeah, that's what you want to do. IP tables is a thing of the past. I remember I used to make like a hardening of Linux systems or Linux servers. And I had a script that used IP tables, but I don't think I ever went back through and updated that project. Probably should, but I got an email the other day from somebody saying they hardened their Windows instance and now they can't connect to the internet. I was like, what script were you using exactly? That's kind of interesting. I probably went through like WF.MSC and then <laughs> blocked everything. <laughs> I've seen Windows users do that. It's kind of funny. The script kitties of the world. Um, all right. So we got that done. We've got that main system. Let's switch over here. Now we're gonna make a libvert group for your user um, and change this out. Now, I, I wanna say we need to, this is kind of backwards. I should update this. We should probably just go new group, libvert, uh, pseudo, um, pseudo new group. So now we'll have libvert as a group and let's just take this one and we're gonna edit libvertd.comp in etc so let's just vim etc libvert 
livert.comp. And we're just going to go to the end of that and output libvert. This just uh, in, it basically increases the permissions of libvert, uh, the group. And now we can actually add our user to it. I know that was a little convoluted. I kind of messed up on my instructions there, didn't I? All right. Now you won't see yourself in the groups until the reboot, or you can log off, log back in. Uh, the Windows user in me always is like, hey, do that. What does this say? Uh, oh, you can also add these commands for changing libvert. You need to enable it. Um, is there anything else? The default is okay, one. That's what I chose to. I love the having, you know, this is one thing on my website, having the comment section, but having it authenticated by GitHub users. GitHub users is just, you get so many high quality comments and so so few of the just garbage you see on most websites. This is by far one of the best solutions I've ever had for comments. All right. Um, yeah, I think uh, actually the Steam Deck does use KDE by default. Let's uh, launch Vert Manager. I don't think, well, let's launch it from Vert Manager. Yeah. We'll have to redo it before it connects. Um, I think we could probably do it, but ah, I'm going to just log off, log back in just to make sure. Anything else? I think we're good there. I need to silence my phone. I hate it. It's, I swear every time I start streaming, it just starts beeping when it hadn't been doing anything all day. All right. So QME is installed. Vert Manage ready to go. I think uh, we also... Uh, from the look of this, I might actually do like an LX appearance because uh, if you noticed on Vert Manager, I don't think it actually pulled in the proper scheme. It could also have been launched by, uh, let's just log out, uh, log out. Uh, yeah, IO, IOMMU should be enabled by default. Uh, also make sure, depending on whether you're using Intel or AMD, you might need to enable, I think it's like SVM. I can't remember exactly for AMD. And then for Windows or Intel, it's I think uh, Vert D, uh, VT D. And uh, there's a couple other BIOS settings for virtualization. You'll know real fast if you got something wrong, though. When you launch Vert Manager and it takes forever to do anything, <laughs> you got it. Sometimes it'll actually warn you, too. <clears throat> Still, I have an authenticate there. Hmm. That's interesting. I kind of want to hmm, change that. Let's go preferences. It wants to use Spice by default. QCOW2 is fine. CPU default. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I like to use UEFI by default. Just because these days you really shouldn't be using legacy anymore for pretty much anything. Uh, control and alt to release. USB, spice USB direction we're not going to really need. I'll leave it enabled for now, but I don't think we're really going to even need to bother with that. The rest of this is fine. And let's install LL Experience just to see if we can't change that around. I, I want to say, I don't think it's a GTK app for manager, but let's just see if we we have it um you have lx appearance right there yeah lx appearance should hmm did i spell it wrong i think i must have spelled it wrong oh well there we go and appearance huh. oh i missed the a i was about to say what let's go breeze dark apply uh color scheme this is interesting um we are missing a color scheme here. Let's just install Nord. I think there you can actually grab the Nord theme uh, from the AUR. Let's see. Nordic theme Git. I think I've used in the past. There's not going to be anything from the official one. You have this one, but I don't think that's valid. So I think Nordic theme right here is the one I'm going to go with. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Arc theme. Arc is okay, but I like Nord theme a lot better. Lex, thanks for the prime. 
one dark's actually a pretty good one. I, I usually, I, if I don't have a really good Nordic, I'll, I'll default to one dark. You know, I don't think I've used Doom One. I'll have to check that one out too. Doom One is a little bit better based on one dark. I, I, you know, I used to mess around and try and make my own themes, but you know, so many people spend countless hours and days and weeks perfecting the theme. I think it's just better to just grab one. A lot of people like Dracula too. Um, I'm trying to think of any other really popular ones. Yeah, Capuchin is also a huge one that uh, is a big, big on the theme list. All right, we got our Nordic theme in now. Let's go uh, LX Appearance, Nordic Apply. Got our colors, our icon theme. You know, I don't even like Breeze Dark that much, to be honest with you. I kind of like uh, Papyrus better. So let's grab that one. This one, Simple Nord Light. I uh, kind of, let's see, which one do we like better? The Breeze Light actually looks pretty nice. The Nord one looks a little too basic for me. Yeah, Breeze Light I feel like is a little bit better on the that front. So let's just fix this one now too. Now let's go Papyrus. And we want the Papyrus icon theme. I don't know the difference between e-Papyrus and regular Papyrus, but I always just grab the regular Papyrus and that's, uh, that's good. Candy icons are a little bit too much in my face. Don't like it. Uh, tele icons are actually pretty nice. I like that one, Benji. All right, Nordic, apply, icon. I like how Papyrus just is like, it does not matter. <laughs> All right, that one's good. So we got that. So now if we go Vert Manager, do, are we blinded still? The whole point of doing all this was so when we launch into Vert Manager, it no longer looks terrible. And I say we got it. Okay, cool. So we're not gonna blind everybody while we work on it. Although I would, I would like to do a little bit more blown up. Me and my old man eyes. You know, a lot of people are like, why do you always increase the font? And I'm like, well, I tell everybody it's for chat, but for being honest, I just like really big font. <laughs> I'm always rocking at least a, a good 16 point font. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, anytime I see like a 12 point font, I'm like, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's start building out our Windows VM now. So we'll exit that and go vert manager and start building. Go from local machine forward. And I think we'll grab a pool. We'll call this one the images pool. Let's browse, go images, open, finish. This pool should grab from the NFS share. Got roughly uh, 40 terabytes of usage uh, that we only 34 terabytes free though <laughs> uh yeah it's a roughly 100 terabyte pool that we can pull from so we'll, we can just grab any image of all time if i've downloaded it once um i think we're gonna go 23h2 just because i want bad things to happen that way it's content generation yeah, this, uh, all my images pool, all my main drive, all the working documents, everything's from an NFS share. So I love NFS. Uh, a lot of people use SMB because they flip back and forth between windows. I'm just a huge proponent of NFS in a home environment like this. If someone gets on my network, uh, the problem with NFS is you, it's hard to break down the permissions. And personally, I don't care about permissions because if someone gets on my network, Frankly, that's the last thing I'm worried about, whether or not they have permissions to an NFS share. Uh, you know, I, I at least trust them. And most people that get on my network are not tech savvy enough to hit my NFS share. And it's just me at that point. <laughs> so that's why I use NFS. It's faster than SMB, a lot less overhead on the packets, faster transfer rates. It's just better. You see it a lot in business when you do mass virtualization on a huge scale. All your... Uh, your SANs use NFS on a separate uh, storage area network. So no no users are on that network. So you can use NFS and you, you get the benefit of all the extra power. All right, let's, uh, what kind of CPUs are we gonna get? Let's throw 16 Visual CPUs at it. 
Uh, memory wise. Oh, what do we want to do? Uh, probably like 16 re 86. Is it Re 86? Is, is that, uh, let's see, eight, 384. Yeah, 16, 384, 16 gigs. Pretty sure. <laughs> All right, uh, disk image size. Uh, I think we have 80 gigs available in the default location. We're gonna select a new one. We're gonna go manage. We're gonna call this one a VM pool. And we're gonna stick this pool uh, probably in our home folder and put it in a new one called VMs and say open. So we're going to call this one VMs and we have 1.4 gig, uh, 1.4 terabytes free there. It is direct NVMe storage. I don't think we're going to really use this very much. And now that I think about it, we probably want to do like a PCI pass through and just use our existing drive. Hmm. Let me think about this. Do we want to just pull the NVMe drive that's on this system? So then we won't ever boot to Windows. We'll always be booting to Linux. And then we'll just emulate Windows in Linux. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's the way to go. Let's just, we'll just do a QCOW2, say choose. But uh, we're going to change and customize before the install. Bridge networking is fine. Uh, yes. So if you're unfamiliar with bridge networking, what we have to do here is change that around as well. Yeah, so we're going to be passing through NVIDIA, but we're using AMD. I only use AMD GPUs for Linux, NVIDIA for uh, for everything else. Uh, let's see here. So we have that, our CPUs. The topology is always wrong here. So we're going to do a single socket. We'll do eight cores, two threads. So we'll set that topology, memory, 16 gigs. Right now it's at the SATA disk level. And I want to say we can do a pass through here. And to do the pass through, before I wipe this out, let's see what we can do. I think what we can grab is just PCI host. And I want to say we can just select the NVMe drive from here. So you have this one. That is SanDisk WD Black NVMe SSD. I think that would be the one I have the Windows install on. We have quite a few uh, PCIe slots in this system. Now, one thing I'm a little bit worried about is whether or not these are separated IO MEMU groups. Uh, we'll find that out when we go to quick pass through. Man, I know this seems a little crazy, but I think what we're going to do is pass through the physical PCIe WD Black S, uh, SSD. So the boot options are actually going to look like this. And we're going to try and grab our existing Windows install that is on bare metal and move it to a PCI pass through. Uh, can you explain the difference between NAT and bridge? Uh, network address translation uh, is, is what NAT stands for. And just imagine two different networks set up. So you have a virtualized network and then you have your basic bridge network over here, your main network that all your systems and stuff are on. So when you, by default, what happens is it sets up a NAT network over here and then it's on its own one. So to communicate to everything over here, it has to go through this network translation layer. And a lot of times it can't hit things in the network. So it's kind of isolated out, which is good for most VMs, especially if you're doing any kind of security work or let's say you're running viruses and things like that. You don't want it to have access to your regular network. So by default, it's kind of separated out. A bridge basically means you're going to put it on that host network. So it's going to be bridged in and it's going to have like, let's say you're 192.168. Well, a bridge is going to be 192.168. Well, a lot of times when you have the, the other NAT based network over here, it's going to be something completely separate. It'd be like a 10.000 or um, I want to say 127. That's not it. What's that other weird one that uh, sometimes ugh, I never use it. It's always 192.168 or, or uh, a 10. Dot. I like 10. Dot. So I, anyways, 
regardless, it would be a separated network. Uh, so we'll we'll set it up as a bridge. Uh, would, if we look right here, this right here is set up as a virtual network. We could bridge it, which we will probably have to do. Um, yeah, we'll set it. We'll leave it at the the default NAT network for now, but we will do a bridge. Yeah, one seven two. Thank you guys. <laughs> That's the other one. Uh, All right, but most instances for this, since we want it to act like a regular PC, bridge is what we want. We don't really want the defaults because we don't want it isolated out on its own little island. Um, what other setup we want to do? I feel like let's just for the boot options. I kind of want to just remove this. Let's just delete it. Uh, for the sand, I might leave that for now. Nah, let's just remove it. Let's see if we can actually see the PCIe and just boot directly to it. So we have our PCIe. So this is going to just try our first pass through with just the hardware. Let's begin. Host doesn't support pass through of host PCIe devices. Okay, first error here. Let's see, unsupported configuration. Let's let's go ahead and do quick pass through, and just see what happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Let's just close. We'll we'll remake that. We got the idea of what we want to do. Now let's grab quick pass through. All right, 2.0. I've never used this version. I just know it's written in Go. So. Let's find out. The first version was really cool, though. Uh, XVF, quick pass through. Ignoring unextended target keyword. Huh. All right. All right. This script has made it easier for GPU pass through. All right. IOMU is disabled either in UEFI or BIOS or bootloader or run inside container. For your bootloader, make sure you add the kernel parameters. Okay, let's do that. And then let's also check um, uh, control shift C. And what we're going to do here, sudo vim default grub. And under our kernel parameters, we also need to change this. I think we can just paste that in. We will add more to it, I'm sure. Uh, from here, let's make uh, grub mk config output I kind of forget how to do that but I feel like that's about right all right we got all of that I wonder what Wayne is <laughs> I found Wayne on drive SDD3 where did I pull that hard drive from hmm questions okay so with that let's reboot and we'll try to uh, try to get into our BIOS. <laughs> now find dark. Party on. Excellent. Might be dating myself a little bit there. Yeah, the one downside to this monster workstation is the boot times are not fantastic. Sometimes they take like upwards of a minute. All right, there's our startup menu. All right. BIOS setup. Should be under advanced usually. Let's go system options, raid mode, fine, fine, fine. I don't see anything there. Uh huh. Port options, nothing. Network setting, power management options. Nope. Performance. Hmm. I think all that's fine. Remote management and an ME is off. Ugh. Slot configuration shouldn't matter. Graphics configuration shouldn't matter okay hmm did they put it under security I don't think so HP cloud managed can we just disable that I don't think we need to use that hmm interesting yeah Emmy <laughs> never really turns off even though we tell it to turn off at least it'll minimize it let's just say that I don't see anything else okay let's go to main huh 
These, this should be all storage stuff. Ice Guzzy, no. Oh, this is just raid. The network's like booting from the network device. Has to be in here. Has to be in here somewhere. So let's just go through each one. Startup delay of 10 seconds. I kind of like that. I know, probably not 10 seconds. Let's do five seconds. We could do fast boot. Let's, let's enable fast boot and see what happens. Uh, power off. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I don't see anything there. Sure, recover. I don't even know what that is. Let's just disable it. <laughs> if I don't know what it is, I'm disabling it. System. I swear it should be in here. Am I missing it? Maybe it was just... I think it's enabled by default on this system. It would Because, I mean, people get this system mainly for virtualization. So it would make sense that it's just not even an option. It's just enabled. Yeah, the BIOS is terrible. 100%. That's just HP for you. I, you know, give me an old American Megatrends BIOS any day of the week. I hate the ones with mouses and like the new fancy BIOSes. It's just awful. I'm just seeing what options we have here. That's cool. I kind of like that readout. Personality slot. Ooh. Has a personality? All right. That's fine. USB device ignore list. I really don't see any IOMU options. All right, let's save changes and exit and see what happens. Maybe it just needed the kernel, um, the kernel option in Grub. We redid the Grub, so hopefully it fixes it. Yeah, I'm kind of old school on my BIOS picks. I really like basic BIOSes. Resizable bar needs to be disabled for virtualization. Um, I don't, I, you know, I don't think it really matters to be honest with you, especially for us. We're going to be basically passing it through. I've had issues with resizable bar in the past, but I, I remember flipping back and forth between it. And I think it just, if you have resizable bar disabled, make sure it's disabled in your hypervisor. If you have it enabled, make sure it's enabled in your hypervisor. And, and I think that's, the gist of it. Well, that's okay. Weird. Uh, I like to just kind of disable all the extra features. <sighs> Wolf security can go F themselves. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Watch it not boot. <laughs> I made the HP gods mad. Why go HP and not Dell? I mean, honestly, I don't really care between the two. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be doing a Discord server again. That's... I'm done. I'm done with that. <laughs> uh, it's just not my jam. Managing people and all the other stuff, it's just too much work. Well, I got to say, all this turning on and off is not exactly the most heartwarming experience right here. We'll see if it actually boots. Did I mess something up? Might have to rewind the VOD. Yeah, the pings when you go live. I, I totally get it. I could go old school, set out emails, do my own notification email server. Hmm. Okay. Are you going to boot this time or are you going to shut off again? Come on, Wolf. Make your decision. Server systems are always fun to deal with, BIOSes. And by fun, I mean... Not fun at all. They take forever, and they just kind of... It's, 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 I get why they do it. There's a lot of safeguards enabled, but I don't know. That's one thing I miss about residential machines. Residential machines, the BIOS is just so fast, but eh, it's not the worst thing in the world. It looks like it's going to boot this time around. Oh, I'm sure it likes to be enabled. We just don't want it enabled. <laughs> Like, ME, Intel ME probably likes being enabled as well, but I'm just like, nah. I don't like to phone home as much as possible. Okay. Let's try our pass-through again this time. So, downloads. Let's go sudo quick pass-through. Yeah, here we go. Select the GPU to view IOMU groups of. We want NVIDIA. Perfect. Yes. Make sure you want to run the script with your display manager stopped using SSH or TTY. 
um, generate a VBio script. I don't think it really matters. Let's go. Disabling video output in Linux for the card. Blah, 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 blah. Force disable video. Yeah, let's force disable. All right, finalizing configuration. The kernel arguments will be added. Blah, blah, blah. The program for this. Type in your password to sudo using stdn. Press control C and copy the files. Update your bootloader and rebuild your init RAM FS manually. Ah, uh, I don't really want to do any of that. Okay, let's just hit next. Watch me break my system here. I trust Hikari. I'm sure Hikari did his due diligence. <laughs> All right, he's making um, the VFIO configuration. This should create a block list to basically get rid of the NVIDIA card. That's good. Mm. I think that'll be fine. Now, I want to say there's probably something else here. Continue with sudo using STDN. Escape to exit. Okay. Check the debug log for a detailed output. Okay. Well, huh. Let's check our grub. What's that look like? Oh, we didn't install Batcat. We gotta have Batcat. Oh. All right, cat. All right. Gotta have... Look at this pretty cat. So beautiful. All right. What is what is, what do we what do we do here, Ikari? Let's take a look and see what kind of options we added. All right. Here's the PCIe. You got IOMMU that equal PT Intel IOMMU on BFIO PCIe or PCI IDs. These should be all of the Nvidia stuff. And then we have PCI disable VGA equals one making sure all of the cards are not going to be registered. Perfect. So all that looks good. And if we cat like an ETC default grub, I bet you he also added it here. Yeah. Look at, look at her car. He just knows his stuff. Ah, perfect. So all those should be good. So if we go LS PCI, um, I have quite a few PCIe cards, but if you look, when we do an LS PCI, I have a few PCI -E devices. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot of PCI. -E. Um, we should see an NVIDIA in here somewhere. In here somewhere. Here we go. So around the 70, 75 IOMU group right here is our NVIDIA. So when we reboot, when we do a LS PCI, it shouldn't see anything. So all this whole group should be pretty much gone. Now there's another PCIe I kind of wanted to get rid of and also pass through, which is the USB card. So we might need to come back to that. Um, cool. That's good. Let's reboot. Is Debian a good beginner Linux distro? Yeah, it's getting there. The best beginner distro out there is probably still Linux Mint. It's probably the best at holding your hand and all the little stuff like Clem and the development team at Linux Mint's done is really noob friendly. So I'd say Linux Mint probably, probably does the best job for beginners. Uh, regular Mint or LMDE? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to lean towards LMDE. When LMD first came out, not so much. It was regular Mint. But last time I tried LMDE, it worked really darn well. And... I would not be surprised if regular mint disappears and all you get is LMDE uh, soon. So that that probably will happen eventually. Oh, shoot. Shit. That's not good. Uh-oh. Well. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It might have... Did it just block the entire... I think it... I think it... Oh, no. Sad face. 
I can't use any of my USB devices and it's not seeing the device UUID. Something ran afoul. Hmm. Well. All right. Can we control delete? Yeah, no. You can't do that. Okay. It's, uh... Hmm. Bummer. Come on. There we go. We might be able to modify Grub to exclude this PCIe IDs and hope that's what caused that. Uh, problem I'm seeing, I think, what if the UUID edited it incorrectly? That's also an option. So the editing of the Grub could have gone awry and it screwed up the UUIDs of the hard drive. I hope that's not it. Hopefully it's just like a PCI ID and then that IOMU group got tied in, but oh, I don't know. Okay. That's so weird. I wonder why my, why my, my, my regular keyboard doesn't work until we get into here. Okay. So search no floppy set root load linux vfio i think what we'll do is just take off all these uh the vfio stuff uh and see if it boots if that doesn't boot then i think it screwed up the uid in my grub um to fix that uh, that would suck it's fixable, but we'll probably just go to media maybe at that point. Let's see what happens. We're going to remove VFIO and see what happens here. Ah, well, shit. Yeah, not good. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a fun one right there. Um, Hmm. Unfortunate. I thought it did recreate the init RAM disk. Maybe it got like the UUID incorrectly. Possibly. Huh. Eh. Anyhow. Ba ba ba. Now. Should have this. I'm just gonna tap Escape. Escape should give us a boot menu. All right, startup menu enabled. Yeah, I'm not sure on this one. So what we'll do is we'll ch root into the environment. See if we can't figure out what the hell's going on. Let's look at that debug.log. It should be sitting in my downloads. See if we can't see something there. Probably should have done a backup if I was a thinking man, but I think this should do backups for you. So I think we could redo like the image, uh, the init RAM again, if we had to set font, uh, tur V let's go 24 B. Yeah. All right, cool. So now everyone can see what we're doing. Uh, let's go LSB. Okay. And now let's start manually mounting our drives. So we'll do mount. Dev, NVMe, E1, N1, P2, and we're going to mount that into MNT. Then we will do NVMe, E1, N1, P1, and we'll mount that to MNT boot. And then we'll finally finish this off with an NVMe, one N1, P3, and that's going to be going into MNT home. With those done, we should be able to do an RH CH root into MNT. Now we're in our install. So if we go into home, Titus downloads, uh, let's see, do we have um, a debug log? Let's go Vim debug log. Okay. So let's step through this and just see what happened. So it created uh, config mod probe. All right. Did the IOMU group 
we have the NVIDIA. It grabbed the query. It added all the LS IOMU groups done. Okay. That sounds good. Writing utils for dump VBIOS. Adding disable VGA equals one. Users disabled VFI video posts on the hub. Adding. Okay. Anything else got added? Um, make sure. Now on this one, I think we actually will get rid of the soft dependencies in VFIO on Mod Probe for AMD GPU and Radeon because we're not passing those through. We'll probably added them in the script somewhere. And I don't think that was the problem we're running into, but still. All right, editing grab. What happened here? Here's the old version of grub. Uh-huh. And then here's the new version. So what happened? Then it rebuilt the init RAM FS. Hmm. Well, I'm looking through here. All this looks really good. And that's the end. That's the end of it all. I do have a syntax error on STDNIN. Oh, I wonder what's up with that. Uh, let's pull up line seven of mkinit sp or cpio.conf. That looks more the issue. Huh. Okay. Oops. Let's go vim, vim, and etc mkinit spio.conf. Let's look at line seven which one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What is wrong with this line here? Huh? I th think that's wrong. Yeah. This makes more sense to me. I think it's a bug in Hikari's programming here. So with that done, we need to reinitialize the init RAM uh, rebuilding init RAM FS. I can't say I mainly have done that. Does Grub automatically do it when you do a rebuild? Okay, well. Chat says MK init CPIO. And just simply do Linux. Ah, look at that. Twitch chat comes through for us again. All right, here we go. No error. No error. Come on. You got this. <clears throat> oh, I think this is looking a lot better, guys. Yeah, so I think the init CPIO, when we did this project, I think it just screwed up the config file. Well, just a hair, though. I think it got us like 99% of the way through, and we just had to tweak one thing. Um, I'm good with that. I think we just... You mount all and reboot this sucker. <clears throat> I think it's going to boot this time. And I we didn't run into, yeah, we didn't run into anything. So I think we're good. I think we're solid. It's going to boot. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Dab. <laughs> Here it comes. It's gonna work any second. I'm not even gonna bother changing the BIOS. I'm, I'm, I liked everything that was added by the script. I think it just messed up the init RAM. So it's gonna boot perfectly this time. Oh, eh, uh. ah, okay. <laughs> oh patience patience i was like ah I, what could have gone wrong there <laughs> all right ah perfect so now when we do a lspci we shouldn't see our little nvidia on the 75 right in here <laughs> Ah, no, 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 no. We still see it under LSPCI, but if we grep, let's like do it. LSPCI 
KN, and then let's just like grep 75. Oh, LC, no, that's LS. Uh, grep. What, 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 what is the command to tail uh, five lines on a grep? Is it just like in five? Oh, no. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what we did, that's just junk. But then we got our 75 here. And what I did was I grabbed like the five lines after it reaches a grep of 75. So these should be our, our uh, NVIDIA. This is all NVIDIA, and you should see driver in use, VFIO, PCIe, which is perfect. So instead of using the NVIDIA stuff, it is using VFIO, where like our AMD GPU is up here, and it's using AMD GPU, which is good. Perfect. So it's ready. It's ready for a uh, pass-through. Uh, so let's go vert manager. A mental note, need to fix the QMU output so it doesn't require elevation every time. Oh, K5. Okay. That's another way of doing it. <clears throat> One other thing. I had to pass through the... Pass through... Pass through NVMe drive QMU. Uh, let's see. No, it's just a post. It's not going to give me what I want. Let's try old level one text here. Uh, the masters of PCIe pass-through. All right. I think we just need to add the PCIe ID for the for the NVMe. I'm not sure on the IOMU group being isolated though. So I'm, I'm a little bit iffy on that. Um, I actually kind of want to grab this one that's actually a pretty good one uh let's just do that oops <laughs> oh actually i think if i because i switched user to root that shouldn't be i am ah that's not gonna work dang it uh groups we're on kvm but i need to QMU. We already have audio and KVM in there, though. They actually duplicated KVM down here. So, really, audio is there. Libvert's already there. We go groups. Oh, no. I didn't make myself part of the Libvert group. I thought I did. My bad. Okay. So, now we got KVM, QM. That should fix our... That. All right. As far as UDEV rules... Hmm. Let's look at our UDEV rules. Let's go UDEV rules. Oh, we don't have any UDEV rules. Let's try that as pseudo just to make sure. No, there's nothing in UDEV rules. Uh, let's let's go ahead and make some QMU rules then. Nano. We, we ain't using nano. Come on now. All right. And append or change of present. Owner root group KVM. I don't think that's needed. The ID vendor and such. Hmm. We're not using app armor, so we don't have to worry about all that. Like an app armor profile would suck. QMU we might change though. I know with QMU we will have to change for uh, access to the shim file, video shim. I see what this guy's trying to do. Some of it's good, some of it's not. A little bit overkill on some of it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we'll need to change the values to match our PCIe IDs. And Hikari actually made a really good uh, post. He, I don't think he's updated in a while, but he does a lot of it. And I think for the UDEV, he actually had it there. Uh, Hikari quick pass through. Let's go here, but instead of using quick pass through, he has a VFIO setup docs. How old is this? <laughs> it hadn't been updated in a while, but last I looked at it, it, it looked pretty good. And I remember last time it got me pretty much the way where I needed. Oh, doc X gross. 
What else we got? O ODT. I don't think I have an install for ODT. We have PDF. We'll just go PDF here. Okay. So installing QME Invert Manager enabled. Yes, yes. Isolating and stubbing your GPO. Are these bookmarked? Ah, that would have been good. All right. That's enabled. You can check. We had that. We've already done all that. That's good. LSIMMO. I think let's just check. What's the output of this? Is it is there an output for it? Let's just open up a new prompt. Ah, uh, yeah. He never added that binary in his script. We can grab it though. Right. So the mod probe, this is actually already isolated and stubbed. We already did the grep of the VGA audio. And we saw that the drivers were uh, were the, what they should be. Um, since we don't have that uh, LSIOMU, that script's actually from level one, from what I remember. I remember level one having something very similar. Let's see, can I copy it? Yeah. Let's just LS PCI and then we'll pipe it this. And you can see these are all the audio. How oh, we gotta think about the audio as well. We could do like a scream network audio type situation. There's a lot of different ways to pipe the VM audio. We could also just do it hardwired. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, the, it's isolated out. So I know the groups are different, which is good. The problem I'm thinking Z80 is the group for the NVMe is not going to be, not going to be good. So that's fine. So we got our mod probe. All right, VFIO, PCIe. That's all been updated and added. And then app armor permissions we can skip over since we're not using app armor. Making the VM using a physical disk for the virtual machine. You got to edit the thing and ah, uh, okay. So we'll just do a manual edit of the XML to push the disk by ID and then just select that exact partition or that exact, that entire disk, <clears throat> which should be pretty easy it is very important. You enable trim support for SSD pass through, uh, once in windows, I think we got pretty much all of it there. I think I got an idea now. So I didn't see anything for actually using UDEV rules. So we're going to actually not bother with that. Uh, right now it's elevating. Let's close this out. I'm going to go ahead and log out, log back in. We'll check our groups. And what I want to see on our groups is KVM, Libvirt, and um, a few other things. We also got to fix our SDDM so it looks not like trash. But we go groups. There's KVM. Where's Libvirt? Uh, what? Maybe Libvirt D. Okay, group Libvirt D doesn't exist. It's so strange. I wonder why that didn't work. Oh, well. We'll just elevate to... Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, it'll let us in without prompting anymore. Let's create our image. Oh, we're just going to go forward. Can we... Ah, it's not going to allow us, but that's fine. Let's go 16 and 16, 384. Um, we're going to just select manage VM, choose forward, customize before install. Uh, Yes, we'll activate that. UEFI. All right, great. So here's the file disk, and I think we can change that around. And on the PCIe, I think we can go PCIe host device, and then we can actually pass through. Before we do the pass through on the video, I want to actually edit to get the hard drive first, though. And for using the physical disk for your machine, that's around page 10. And what we're grabbing here is this disk type block disk and then grabbing the raw. So let's just grab this copy paste. And then we got to fix our ID. So let's just go LS dev disk by ID. And then we simply select the proper disk. 
which there is quite a bit of. <laughs> Eeny, miny, 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 miny. All right, here we go, here we go. I think it's this one. All right. So we'll grab that. Paste. That'll grab our NVMe, pass it through, target SDA, and bus SATA. Apply. Wait, what? Hmm. What? Why? What? No. Ah. Okay. Copy. Apply. <sighs> okay. I think it's not going to let me change it. Let's just begin install. Oh, is it not going to allow me to remove hardware? Sure. Whatever. We might be able to just add it directly. How did I do this last time? It was not file system. Oh, you know what? I don't think I did, did I? I don't know. Yeah, enable XML editings there. Let's see. There should be a storage option here. And we'll just take that storage option and then add in what we need. Now, where are you? Channel, not console. It is in here somewhere. Troller. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Storage. Okay. So you should be able to do disk drive. Advanced options. Yeah. That's ah, not going to allow me to do that, is it? Oh, oh, well. Whatever. I think what I want to get is just let's get the system up. And then we can edit after it's been up. Say what? Unable to complete access to storage file. Permission denied? Really? I don't think so. Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's my bad. Uh, let's just go Titus VM. Yeah, let's just do recursive. That's my bad on that one. Okay. All right, let's uh, begin. Okay, well, we, we have... No, 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 that, that's not owned by Titus. It's, it's owned by me now. Not, not by root. See? We're good. Uh, all right, whatever. Let's remove it and re-add it. Choose, finish. All right, and then we go boot options, disk, begin. Really? I mean, that should work just fine. Libvert, uh, it could be libvert not having access to the file itself because it didn't create it. Um, no, we'll do. We're going to remove it. Let's just delete the associated files. Delete. And then we're going to add this, add the storage, select it, manage it. See, it wouldn't even delete that file. We're going to create a new one. We're just going to call this win test. I uh, will call it win dummy. This is going to just get dumped into in just junk anyways. With win dummy, going to choose that volume. Since it created it, let's look what the permissions look like. I'm kind of curious to see how it's adding files. It's still adding as root. Interesting. So boot options there, begin installation, permission denied. Huh. We could do a UDEV rule and get around it and just say, hey, anybody doing this is fine. It's probably because Vert Manager is running as a user level and not like uh, elevated. Ah, man. Oh, it added root to the group, didn't it? Oh, maybe. Maybe I'd screwed up on that. Uh, let's switch user to root groups. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we probably could just do a group mod and just remove it from the groups. Uh, let's go. Oh, actually, can't use yay. TLDR, update DB. Uh, that's remove module. Uh, da, da, da. User mod. What is it? Group, group delete, no, group mod. Best way to edit a uh, full group, I guess just going through user mod maybe and just removing it. 
Yeah, probably just doing user mod dash R. Or we could just vim etc groups. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I don't, that. Uh, I think it's actually vim etc group. Yeah. So you got that. Not the way to do it, guys. You should use user mod. Look away. You see nothing. <laughs> All right, libvert, and then QEMU we'll get rid of too. And this, I really, we'll have to come back to it. Oh, dang it. Unpin that. So now we have groups. Why is libvert not on there yet? I think we need a reboot then. Groups. All right, well, that's good at least. Um, virtual machine manager. And we're going to just add... And before we get into there, I want to go into the VMs directory and just clear out whatever we had going on. So there's that. If we look at VM groups there, it's still owned by me. So VMs is fine. And it launched without prompting for sudo, which is good. It's always something, I tell you. 16 gigs is what we want. 384. Forward. Create. We're gonna just put this in the default group. We're gonna call it Windows 11, sure. There we go, choose the volume, forward. Um, we're gonna customize, just look at our topology. Uh, I always change the topology on these because it always puts it in sockets, which is kind of weird. So we're gonna go eight cores, two threads, and I'm not gonna change anything else. I just wanna see this boot at this point. <laughs> All right, let's reboot. Let's just reboot. I'm, I'm at this point. I'm kind of convinced there's something, something else awry here. Yeah, I think it just not having access to the libvert group is causing issues, and that's the that's the main thing. On reboot, we should have when we do groups, we should see libvert. The weird thing about that was I added Titus to the the Titus user. To the libvert group you could see it in etc group but when i logged out logged back in usually it refreshes groups libvert wasn't there which is odd but it was there in etc group so i don't know i don't know what's up with that it could be just like a display permission but we're gonna just reboot and it could have been something with the uh something with maybe the the daemon in system D, maybe maybe you'd refresh the daemon and then that would have fixed that. But when you go groups, we should see. See, now it shows libvert. So I think it was just the daemon need to be refreshed. All right. So now vert manager connected. Perfect. No prompts, no elevation needed, which is what we want. We're going to actually forward. We'll just fly through this. At this point, I just kind of want to... Uh, all right, flying through that option, manage VMs. Let's just go here, finish, choose volume, forward, customize. Yeah, sure. CPUs, fix our topology. Let's go one, eight with two threads. Begin installation. Ah, what the hell am I missing? It does not like the permissions in the VM. Let's go etc libvert qmu.conf. Cobb, we're going to take your advice here and just take a peek here. Libvert and then qmu.conf. What's in here? Do we have anything? As far as permissions, VNC, Spice, all this is commented out, so nothing's really being set. Just looking to see if there's any options in here that might. All right. The user for QMU process is run by the system instance. It can be specified as a username or a user ID. The QMU driver will try to parse that value first as the name, and if the name doesn't exist, as the user ID. So the user, I think we could just go user, and then just, since I'm the only user of the system, go Titus. And then for the group, 
this should be just libvert. Oh, shit. Like that. I feel like that would be uh, correct. Now, let's continue down. See controllers. See, almost all this is just set to defaults. I don't see anything else. Let's just see if there's any other settings that kind of jump out at me. And how big is this file? Log files, okay. Storage is probably also, you could put your, yeah, I could put it in the DMs, but I really want to make my own storage because that that file, uh, the, the root is its own separate partition and only has 100 gigs. So putting, putting images in the root is not viable. We need to change that, which I think we'll just change that as well. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's change, change default storage QMU. All right, we got Versh SA. Let's just destroy that pool. I'm okay with that. All right, pool the default destroyed. Creating a directory to host the new pool. All right, we already did that. Um, we already built that. Hmm, that's okay. We, we can have a duplicate for the pool. Uh, let's list the pools first, though. Let's just go a verse pool list. We're going to switch the user uh, root for this. Verse pool list. Uh, VMs is there. So let's just destroy that one. Verse pool destroy. And we're going to get rid of VMs. All right. And then let's create the pool default target and let's go home Titus VMs uh, conflicts with the storage pool VMs hmm I thought we just destroyed that huh okay so it's not allowing me to do it there that's fine what we're gonna do let's remove VMs uh, let's make directory VMs <laughs> let's make this as confusing as possible all right. Oh, pool uh, pool default already exists with UUID 3EB. Hmm. Does it though? Name default type directory. Uh, let's refresh. Let's refresh this. Uh, the default can be set in etc libvert. Okay. <laughs> oh, tricky, tricky. Um, I think honestly. Let's just do a reload of libvert, libvert D. Libvert's not a pool service, yeah. Libvert D is though. System CTL status libvert D. So we reload. VMs no file or directory. No file or directory. Hmm. Pool list. Default is there now. Let's double check the storage default XML. So let's go vim etc libvert storage uh, default. And if we look here, UUID set to 3EB in the path. Ah, okay. And that UUID I think is incorrect. We go BLKID and really what we're looking for is a home. Um, and the home should be here. So what it's doing is it's grabbing 3EB, which 3EB is, what UUID is ending in 3EB? Does anybody see it? 3EB would be, no. I don't see that UUID. So I don't know where it's grabbing that UUID from, but there is no such UUID that I see. Just made it up. I mean, technically it should be, Huh. Unless it's grabbing the disk drive itself instead of oh, libvert only UID, maybe. Doesn't make much sense though. 6B, EDF, bytes zero. Huh. It's an auto gen file. Verse pool edit default. Let's do it this way. Let's just yank that and then pseudo oh well it didn't actually <laughs> all right let's go pool edit default K 
cannot find VI. Really? Versh pool edit default. So the default editor. Uh, all right. Let's go export editor equals invim. All right. Now from here, I still don't know what this, G I think this GUID is just auto generated. And I feel like we can just come in here and just change it. Ah, hell, let's see what happens. All right. It's weird that you, it doesn't really clear those out. Oh crap. Oops. So let's just try VMs like that. Okay, that took. And we do we have the VMs directory? Okay, we have the VMs directory there. And if we just do like a pseudo default edit, oh well. I, I think it's there. I think we're good. Let's just see what happens uh, with this. I, I think the UUID is supposed to be unique anyways. And I don't think it's that big a deal. Famous last words. Okay, that's auto started, cool state. And then restart the libvirt service as well. Uh, restart libvirtd. Let's just check the status of libvirtd. Cannot find dmcido in the path directory. Oh, you know, we might be missing some, uh, oh, I, I can't remember what it is, but yes. We're missing that. Let's let's restart uh, libvirt D again. Go status. Failed to read PCI VPD data. I kind of want to clear out some of these operation uh, failures just because I want libvirt D to work seamlessly. Not sure on this error. I haven't seen it before. We could do a proper restart as well. I figure well, let's give it a, give it a try before doing a restart just because this thing takes forever. <laughs> Uh, firmware bug, maybe? Hmm. Subscriber exclusive access. Okay. Update kernel, update firmware. I think we can roll with this. I don't think it's that big a deal. I just was looking at it. It might be something with how we're doing uh, the blacklisting or the block list. All right. Fine. So now we've done that. Let's close this out. And vert manager see what we get on this side of things we'll try to reload it again i'm just so sick of doing this so we're just gonna fly through so here's our default 11 gigs in use eight vegas free it did not if we refresh can't delete the permanent pool there all right let's just do a proper restart god bless i freaking hate restarting this computer that's the one downside to having all the this more of a server-based workstation yeah, you can do the dev path SD in the path of the storage selection. Well, let's try that next, droid. I think I've done that before as well. But the I think it has to be specified as a block device if you're doing pass through. I think I also need to change mod probe because we have this long dark screen now. And I want to say there's something happened with mod probe where it's like taking down like AMD GPU or uh, Radeon uh, kernel driver. And I feel like there's like it's failing or something on the startup there. Shouldn't take that long on the startup. So anyways, something to also look forward to in the future. Let's just go next forward. Did set the VM directory to Titus this time. Yay. Just wanted to check. I don't even care anymore. Ah, uh, let's go manage. Okay, that does look right. Finish. Choose volume forward. Let's just go. Okay. Took us long enough. Perfect. Awesome. Worked it great. So now let's break it. <laughs> now that we got it working, now let's break it. Uh, let's take our storage device and we're going to edit that XML and see how it says type file disk and then it specifies everything. Now we can go back to, let's just grab that. Uh, what was it? Three tabs. I think it was actually this PDF is what I want. 
And I want to say it's page 10. And what we're going to grab is this guy. Just break this right over our knee. We'll paste this in. Oh, crap. Oh, man. I messed that up. There's our beautiful driver. And we need to fix our ID. So we're going to just do an LS of dev disk by ID. And we're going to grab our NVMe black. This already has Windows loaded on it. So if we actually boot off of this NVMe, we'd be right into Windows. I, I want to just use that instance and see if Windows will adjust based on our needs. And then we don't even have to reinstall it. That, but the problem is if I were to boot back into this device after we do the modifications to the virtualization, it's going to mess everything up and it's got to reload the drivers again. It's probably not recommended to do this, but I kind of want to do it. So that's, that's what's up. So we got that. We got our drive in details. It's pushing that ID on the boots. Uh, we're going to actually just get rid of this drive. Delete boot options. We're just going directly to the SATA disk. And video is box. Well, that's kind of a weird default. Um, let's let's see if this works for us. It's not recommended. Let's do it. <laughs> see what happens. All right. What do we got? Ooh, looking good so far. Let's see if Windows bombs out on us. Uh oh. What happened? Uh, ah, okay. No, 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 we're fine. We're still doing okay. Just had a, uh, oh, I don't know what happened. I think, I think the, the mirroring device I'm using, you know, you know me and my quality. It's an Amazon special $20 HDMI mirroring device. I don't, I think it's overheating. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, it's something with. It's something with the actual, huh, weird. So as soon as I click in here, so I, you see this, it's fine. But then when I click into here, it blanks out my HDMI. Is it something with windows? It could be like some form of like HDMI DRM. Very interesting. Let's see if I go, does it bring it back? It does. How wild is that? So when I go right into here, it like blanks out the screen. What in the world? All right. HDCP, possibly. Yeah, I got to reset up my pin. Shit. Yeah, so there's HDCP. Like HDMI is the worst input. Please, for the love of God, use DisplayPort. Try not to give HDMI and the people running HDMI any more money. They're a bunch of greedy sons of, you know, insert bad word here. Just, oh, I hate HDMI with an absolute dire, oh, it just, it, it, it's so stupid. And DisplayPort just works better for everything. Just use DisplayPort if you can. Uh, sadly, most of the capture devices are all HDMI and... As soon as I can get away from HDMI and just use DisplayPort, I will. So I don't have to deal with stupid shenanigans like this. So if you guys, here, I'll just try and put it on here so you guys can see what's happening. It, it, it's some form of copyright with my HDMI signal. The HDMI consortium deserves, I wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire. <laughs> I can't wait for HDMI not to be a standard anymore. It's just awful. Yeah, uh, so H uh, display port. All everybody go display port. Try not to buy any HDMI cables or anything from HDMI or or anything. Just use display port if you can. It's a completely open technology. It works better. It you can do higher refresh rates. Use display port if you can, please. Uh, just oh. I almost want to design something to where DisplayPort will capture, uh, do like a display capture of it, a DisplayPort. I think it would work so much better. 
It does look like this is going to work, though. I mean, the hard drive is working over here. So it did pull in my existing NVMe Windows install. Right now, it's downloading drivers, I think, and then a few other things. And then it should pull in directly from there. We already have that, and then we just got to pass through. Once we pass through the HDMI, that should work pretty good, but we do need to... I'll probably need to put like VNC on it so we can remote into the remote instance of it. Uh, make sure we... So probably the best way to set this up would be bridge networking. Once the bridge networking's done, it'll be on my network so then I can hit it easily from this PC and then make sure I do VNC. So we'd do like a tight VNC setup. That way we don't have to, because there's gonna be a disconnect. Once we pass through the GPU, I don't want to do some kind of janky HDMI cable to this system and then an HDMI cable to that. No, I just wanna put a dummy slot in and then just remote in. So that's what we'll do is probably like a dummy with VNC, get looking glass set up, and then with looking glass set up on the host and then the guest, which this would be the guest, then we'd have that seamless setup to where it's using a physical GPU pass through and it'll be great. It's a bit of a mess to set up. Now there, there's a couple different ways to do it. I like to do it that way. It's a little more complex, but if you want a more simple approach, just grab a second monitor and an HDMI cable and just plug it in and then do the configuration there. The reason why I want to do it this way is so everyone on the stream or on a VOD could follow along and go, okay, I got it now. And then, then they could set up their looking glass, but it's a hard thing to like screen cap. And that's why I'd like to do the bridged approach with VNC. So then everyone can kind of see what's happening between what I'm doing on the Linux host and then the Windows guest uh, VM. And then you can see, because you have to set up looking glass on the guest VM and then also on the host. And it's different, different kind of setup. Now, having said all that, is this, okay, right as I was about to click something. Okay. Now, <laughs> there goes the screen. Uh, oh, that's too funny. Let me, let me log into my Microsoft account. I needed to hide it from you guys anyways, I guess. Does, does my anti-docs even work? Oh, let's let's give you some pretty something pretty to look at for while I'm trying to sign into stuff. Uh, ah, where are you at? Now we could try exiting full screen mode. Let's see. I'm gonna try that real fast. Let's do Control Alt. Okay. Let's try this. And then if I click in, okay, we're good. It just doesn't like full screen mode. That's so wild. So right now it's working just really, really slow. And what we're gonna do is actually power this guy down. Whenever you have a really slow response, like something like this on a VM, let's just uh, let's just power it off. Shut down, shut down anyways. Okay, whatever. Forget you Windows, we're just gonna shut you down. Um, let's go to CPU, let's change our topology. We're going to go 16, manually set topology. This is going to be 8 and 2. Okay, apply. That's going to fix that. Uh, video box is fine for that. Um, I personally would like to go vertio. QXL probably would be a little bit faster as well. But since we don't have any of the drivers, we can just stay on box. It's It's okay. So let's start this guy back up with a different uh, different topology. You should see it work a lot faster now. Yeah, I was just like, ah, whatever. It's like, well, we need to repair our startup. No, you don't. Don't diagnose it, just, just spit me to my desktop. Once we get on, we can uh, load up QEMU and uh, let's just go advanced options, continue. Oh no, I broke it. <laughs> Man, I'm just breaking everything today. Ah, oh, well, it's just Windows. It'll be easy to fix. Um, Sure, let's go troubleshoot. Advanced options, startup repair. Startup repair has like a one in 10 chance of working. 
probably like more like one in a hundred. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Oh my god, this may take over an hour to complete. Get out. No. Oh, Windows. The beauty of NFS journaling. Or NTFS for journaling. How do... Like, can't Windows just... Like, Microsoft already loves Linux. Can't they just, like, adopt a decent disk system? Like, NTFS is just the worst. Like... EXT4 is better, better FS is like light years better. Hell, I mean, I'm sure they don't want to pay Oracle licensing for like ZFS, but can we just get rid of like FAT and NTFS? Just Microsoft, fall on your sword already and just admit your file systems suck and they're below any other OS in the entire market. FreeBSD, Mac OS, Linux, just any other operating system does file systems better than Microsoft. Like, there's nobody out there that thinks NTFS is a good file system. It's just awful. I mean, anybody that actually knows stuff about file systems, right? Uh, NTFS is not good. It's just not a good... You just... The journaling and the, the disk errors, they just happen way too easily. It's just awful. Now, having said that, that was an error to force the, force it down, mainly because I think the trim was probably set incorrectly. So, ah, shit. Broke it. I broke it. Looking back on it, forcing it off was not a good idea. Bah. All right. Well, I guess we're going to fix this. Ah, uh, poo. One second. We'll do a quick little repair. Um, storage. Go CD-ROM. Manage images. Give me 32. Choose finish. Boot options. Let's go. Let's go repair our windows that we've managed to break. All right. So then we're just going to do a shift. Uh, shift F10 probably let's go shift F10 oops shift F10 let's go disk parts all right list fall all righty what do we have here uh, volume 3 is going to be where our boot partition is let's throw that as like the F drive so let's select vol 3 Let's assign letter equal F. List vol. We got F there as a hidden partition. It's great. We'll exit uh, BCD boot. And what we're going to do now is copy the boot files over because apparently nobody at Microsoft has figured out how to do it now. I did a little how to guide. If somebody else watches this and goes, I need to repair my Windows partition, I want to say. Did I make a disk part? Uh, recovering deleted partition. Uh, BCD boot, C windows, uh, S, and then whatever you made the recovery drive, F all. Uh, that just does legacy in. That, that should be fine. All right. So let's come back into here. We're going to go BCD boot, C colon, backslash windows. And then we're going to go F. What was it? F all? What was it? Ah. Yes, oh, it was S. We got to specify the derive. That's right. Uh, S, F, then F, all. I want to say that, that should be correct. S, da, 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 F, all. Perfect. So that should rebuild all our boot files that apparently we're probably missing. And then I think just a boot rec after that, right? Yeah, boot rec, scan OS. We should see C Windows. Shit. Uh, okay. Why boot rack's not getting there? Boot rack. Scan OS. Come on. Nothing. <laughs> we could try to rebuild the BCD. I'm kind of iffy. Sometimes scan OS doesn't work. But. <laughs> um. 
MBR and fixed boot really is only needed if you're using legacy boot. Not really needed any any anything modern these days. You really don't need to do fix MBR or fixed boot for legacy installs. Especially Windows 11 doesn't even have them. I'm surprised that they haven't. Re well, I'm not really that surprised. It's just a legacy tool that was created years ago, but it's still there for Windows 11. Even though those two options are, you can't install Windows 11 using legacy. Um. We can try to rebuild. I don't think it's going to do anything. Ah, did I miss it? Fat fingered it. Yeah, it didn't find anything. Hmm. All right. Let's see what happens. I'm hoping it just like missed a file or something. Let's just let it go through. Should see the C drive and then should boot. Yeah, I'll blame it on a Monday. Really? That sucks. Uh, <laughs> let's try a repair. Starter repair is not going to give us anything. I ran my tool enough. There should be a system restore. Maybe we get lucky. Yeah. Here we go. So there should be quite a few. Because anytime you run my Windows utility, it creates a system restore point. Let's just try that. Yes. So we already rebuilt the entire boot drive. So the boot drive should work. Apparently it corrupted some system files in C Windows. So now we're trying to do system restore. And that should go through. See if there's anything missing and then try and restore it from there. Yeah, system restore typically doesn't work. It's kind of like a, well, a last resort kind of thing. I just don't want to reload Windows. I would much rather, because I've had this instance going for, God, I want to say like a couple of years now. And I clean it out and I do a lot of maintenance to it. So it's not necessarily a bad install. Well, I guess we're going to find out here shortly. Shouldn't take very long to copy this directly from the NVMe. Uh, tried running Windows in a Docker VMware connector. Yeah, you can use it, yeah, Windows in a Docker container. Yeah, hell yeah, I've even seen, I've even loaded up Mac OS in Docker containers. I don't really see a point in that, though. A lot of times I'm like, eh, you know. I'm thinking because we didn't have like the SSD trim on and when I did the force boot down because I was like, oh, we don't have everything. All right, restart. I'm hoping that that'll that'll be fine. But I, I think what happened is it did corrupt one of the system files. All right. Not looking good, guys. Not looking good at all. <laughs> Shit. Uh, force off. We can try it again, just booting directly from the hard drive. I don't think that's going to bear anything for us, though. I think we're just going to get the blue screen of death again. Yeah, could not restart. Hmm. Let's see what kind of recovery options we can get. All right, US. Troubleshoot. I kind of want to just use this opportunity to fix it. Now, you could... I think that if you're using Windows Backup, we don't have that. But what you can do... Is like a DISM. Do we have? Okay, let's go disk part. I know this this unexpectedly is turned into a Windows restore thing, but it's okay. We do have it on drive D. So if we look at D C D sources, um, I'm not Linux. Uh, we should have like an install WIM file in here. Install WIM. So what we can do, so we look, uh, da, 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 DISM, restore health, uh, CD drive against a local source. And I believe you can just go source, whim, and then D sources, something like this right here. I don't even think you need to do limit access. I think you could just go copy. Now the install whim, uh, I don't think that colon one 
that's going to grab like the home edition, <laughs> which isn't what you want. And let's see if there's another. So you got local health. There should be. Yeah, six, I want to say, is probably the pro edition. Something like that. Or ooh, D windows. I think like that should work. Now, I don't think I can paste into here, but uh, we got the idea. Let's just take this guy and let me just get an idea. So we're going to specify, ah, uh, yeah, whatever. Image, specify the image, clean up image, restore health, source. It's going to be whim. And then we specify that. It's kind of a weird syntax, but DISM, image, colon. And then you should be able to go see uh, backslash windows. Let's look at the other one. All right. And then clean up image, restore elf. And then we're just going to grab the source. Source. Uh, we probably should do a git win file. Hmm. Can we uh, launch two of these? I've never tried. Ah, darn it. Uh, control shift. Yeah. Oh, well. We're gonna wing it. Uh, I, I probably should do a git whim file just to double check. That's where uh, what we need, but I'm pretty sure it's six. Six should be pro. One is usually home. Um, all right. Source whim colon, and then we specify d backslash uh, sources. Was it? Uh, I think it's sources backslash install dot whim let's double check that and limit access i'm not sure we need we'll go ahead and add it though yeah i i do agree with doing the git whim file but let's see uh x is not i believe what we're looking for d is where the actual uh cd-rom drive is see we're on d sources right now and we have install um it may want on this may want the quotes windows can get really picky uh, about that also looking back i don't think yeah really what did it was probably this oops it's not the quotes it's the file unable to access the image make sure the image path okay let's try i'm gonna put that c windows in there as well quotes Let's see if we can't repair whatever system files it's missing. Hmm. All right. Uh, I don't think this one has an install, uh, install whim. And I don't think we're going to have enough uh, buffer to actually even check. Uh, let's go. Yeah, this one doesn't even have the install whim file. So it has to be D sources and Ah, uh, what's wrong with this syntax? Let's look. This syntax should be it. All right, let's double check. DISM, get whim info, uh, whim file colon. Let's go D, sources. God, I missed my tab complete now. Install dot whim. And there it is. Index six is pro. So yeah, we're, we're, we're specifying the correct index. Yeah, that's so crazy. And see windows. Let's try offline. See DISM forward slash image colon C windows. Clean up image, restore health. Let's let's dump the Let's just dump the limit access first. Still nothing. Now let's dump the source. Still not. Okay, so it can't access the, the Windows directory. You have read permissions on the folder. So it's a permissions access to C Windows. That's unfortunate. That is just unfortunate. So there's permissions issues with uh, our Windows directory. It could be, remember when we removed like the HP restore thing? It could have been something in there too. 
I don't think so, though. I did boot initially. Dang. And SFC scan now is not going to get us anything. Ah, oh, darn it. You know what? Maybe I was super smart and added, like, Synology back up to it. That would have been a smart thing to do. I probably didn't do it, though. <laughs> uh, knowing me, it's something that it sounds like I, I, I'm i pretty sure on the inside PC I did it. But out here, I've always been kind of like, ah, whatever. Ah, oh, did it, did it, did it go? Okay. Whoa. All right. We're still in business. All right. Well, it does look like I had something and that one's good. Look at that. What's this one? That was all the way back. Let's just delete that one. Confirm deletion. What's this one? Studio PC 329. Okay. Can we restore this one? Restore entire device. It does look like I had something here. I don't know. Can we create a create a deal? Let's do it. Oh, we need Windows. Shoot. Ah, crad. Wait, wait, wait. I think I have a restore creator already done. No, no, we're fine. I've done this before. All right, that's fine. I think in my images directory, we have something to restore. Synology, I've done it before. I forget what I was doing. It was for a video or something. And I must have deleted it. Damn it. Did I really? Well, that's a dumb thing I did. Why would I delete that? That's okay. I mean, I can create another one. Well, this just, this whole stream fell off the rails here at the end. Uh, we were so close. We were so close. I think what I'm going to do offline is get Windows back. I'm going to go ahead and do a restore. I did have a full system backup because I have a an agent on my systems that pull entire backups. So what we're going to do is grab that agent, run it, restore all of, all of that. Once that's back up, I'm going to try and get as much to the point where I'm like, okay, have everything set back up with like a VNC, a bridge mode, and have all of it in here so then we can easily uh, go between all the systems. And I think that would be enough. That, that should be enough to get everything uh, back to where I were. So like the next stream will start where I'm going and we're going to just do the PCI pass through for the next one. I think we got almost all the way here. It's just, man, I shouldn't have shut down or forced shut down that NVMe drive and like corrupted all those files. That was dumb on my part. And I'm sorry for that. Uh, I should not have forced off that because what happens if you don't have SSD trim enabled, a lot of times you can corrupt a lot of stuff in Windows when you're doing, especially when you're doing pass through like this. So that was, that was silly of me. So I think I'll restore everything, get it going, go ahead and install like tight VNC on that, that VM system. Well, it's actually on the actual hard drive and then maybe install like just basic vert IO drivers for QMU. So it'll function a little bit better and make sure trims enabled and get all that going for the next step in the stage, which is just making that GPU pass through functionality there with looking glass. So then we could like game on this. We could do whatever we wanted on that system. Um, I'm just happy we did have some backups. So uh, I don't, I don't want you guys just staring at a, a bar for two hours while it, it restores from my Synology box. Uh, that just sucks. But uh, good progress today. Just not the progress I really wanted. Just some weird, weird things that kind of hang us up. Anytime you do PCI pass through, just expect crap like that. Just weird things that will happen, you know? And if you're not very technically adept, don't try this. <laughs> I gotta tell you, do not try this. I've always had some kind of issue when doing PCI pass through. I usually get there in the end, but it, at the end, it's like 50 steps to get there. And each of those steps can change depending on the system I'm using. I've done pass through on four or five different systems now. And every time I do it, it's always a little different. 
than the next one because there's always something that's unique to that system. Yeah, but anywho, it's it's cool. I, I really wish V GPUs were there a little bit better in and it it does there. But I will say once this does get set up and everything's working well, y'all are gonna like it. It's gonna be really cool, and a lot of the people that follow me for Windows content aren't even gonna know I'm on Linux because it'll be native performance, native everything, you know, native USB, native hard drive, native GPU. So there's not gonna be any hints of it actually being virtualized. Maybe if I pull up Task Manager, they'll be like, oh, he's only got 16 cores. Uh, but even then, I could honestly crank those cores up to where they're like, oh, wow, that's that's a lot of cores, even virtual cores. Um, it, it'd still be enough to trick most people. Uh, so the rating for quick pass through overall, probably not fair, but I really like the older version of quick pass through with Bash. I think Hikari putting it in Go it wasn't as good as the bash version of it quick pass through in bash i felt like it did a better job and i liked the options a little bit better and it was more seamless the go version of quick pass through four out of ten the bash version of quick pass through like eight out of ten um I probably will go back through his commits and steal the bash version <laughs> and fork it <laughs> just just so I have it because that one that one worked so much better and the bash version also had a question for passing through a USB drive and an NVMe drive where the go version doesn't uh, so it, the, those those things and also it didn't have the bug with the modules when doing MK in it CPU uh, CPIO um so there's those things so that was the overview of quick pass through we'll keep hammering away at this we still got a long ways to go with some of it so the next stream will probably be tomorrow and i really want to get this going because this is my main system and i'm not really doing any other videos until this gets ironed out and it's perfect so be expecting a lot more streams and stuff uh, although it is kids spring break so we'll probably go out and do stuff uh towards the end of the week and you won't see me streaming then, but, uh, yeah, yeah, be, be looking forward to that. And then, uh, probably resume like normal video stuff probably next week. I would say, I think once we get all this ironed out, normal videos and that stuff will be coming in the future. I just, this is the last piece of the puzzle getting the software side exactly how I want, but all right, guys, well, thanks for hanging in there for today, watching this disaster un unfold. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one probably tomorrow. I'll see what time I jump on at. I've slept in today and uh, didn't get going quite as early as I want. So hopefully I get on a little bit earlier tomorrow, but we'll see. All right. Peace all.